Hey everyone, it's Miriam from Miriam's Nature. It is after midnight and I really should be going to bed, but I have some paint left over and there is just kind of a little bit of a dirty pour left in me and I kind of want to get that out. So I've got this little bit of black left over, this weird sagey green, which was kind of really a mixture of other paints that I just ended up dumping into a cup. And I thought that I would supplement them with a bit of a magenta, which looks way more pink in this bottle than it actually is, also because of the Floetrol that it's mixed with, and a turquoise. So I'm going to do those in white negative space. All of my paints in this case are Artist Loft brand paints, and my mix is one part paint to five parts Floetrol, and a teeny bit of water, like maybe half a part water. So my dirty pour is mixed. I'm just going to spread some white negative space to play into and spread it around a little bit. And what I found to be really awesome at spreading paint is this pick. This is my new favorite paint spreader. Much easier to clean than paint brushes. And I think it does a better job too. It's more even. I have a nice even white layer surrounding the canvas edge of the canvas. And I'm gonna do my little flip cup in the center here. And this is going to be a little tricky. Even the little piece of paper that helped me flip the cup is so pretty. I think I'm just going to have to let that dry because that's just too pretty to waste. I don't know what it'll be, but we'll set that aside. Make something out of that. Okay. Let us lift the rest of this. Ooh, looky look. Uh, I'm so glad I stayed up for this. All right, I am not going to Pour a lot of it off because it's just too fabulous. I kind of want to leave it just that way. And then play with it a little bit. I've let this sit for a couple of minutes while I contemplate what I want to do. And there's so much about it that I like just the way it is. I really love everything that's going on here, so I'm definitely going to try to keep that intact. The only thing that I kind of want a little bit more of is interaction between the border and the white. But I like the feathering that's happening over up there, and I kind of want a little bit more of it in some of the other corners. So I'm going to blow a little bit to see if I can get a little bit of that. And I'm going to use a fairly big tube for this because I kind of want to move a little bit of paint. But I'm going to blow lightly. Yeah, I'm liking the sort of lacy thing that's happening there more. And I also wanted to break up that heavy black patch of empty space. I'm going to do that to this as well.
so much about this I like. I just don't want to mess with it too much. This sharp little line here almost looks like an accident. Like there's a little bit of pale pink sort of pouring here. It's bleeding a little bit, but it doesn't, it's not a pretty bleed. It's just a bleed. So I kind of think I want to get rid of that. Or at least make it a little more interesting. Nothing dramatic. And I think I might be done. I'm calling this done. It's just too cool on its own. It doesn't need me very much, which is sad because I love to play, but Part of the fun of this for me is sort of pouring out and seeing what happens and seeing what, if anything, I should do. It's kind of like a puzzle, like you don't know what you're going to get, and then kind of figuring it out, solving the mystery of it. Here it is close up, and even the runoff is pretty. Like, I have to keep that as a skin. I don't know what I'll do with it, but it's just too pretty to discard. And then this is that little piece of paper that helped me flip the cup. That's kind of cool, too. And here were some lacy details where I did a little blowing. So when I blew it into the white, that definitely encouraged lacing to happen, which is always my goal with that kind of thing. And then up here, where I did that little pulling with the chopstick or bamboo skewer, that helped lacing happen too. All these little tiny cells are just really coming from the little bit of silicone that was on the side of the cup and that was in the sage green. I'm blown away. So I'm going to have to try these colors again and see if there's something to do with the colors or how the silicone interacted, the small amount there was. I never put a torch to this painting. That's what's blowing my mind also. I never even looked at the torch. I'm glad I stayed up. This was so worth it. I love the organic look of it. Like right in the middle there. Do you guys look at your paintings and look for things in them? I always do. Anyway, let me know if you want to see other pours. I'm happy to film them. I just don't always do it unless it's going to be a tutorial. But if you'd like to see them, let me know by hitting the thumbs up and or by commenting. I read every comment possible and try my best to answer as many questions as I can, which is becoming more challenging as the channel grows. So I'm encouraging you to read comments below the video because someone may have already asked the same question and the answer may already be there. I've gotten a lot of requests for a paint mixing video, which I'll do next week. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done it already. I wish you happy painting. And in the words of a viewer, may the pores be with you. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for watching. Bye now.